One of the craziest announcements that Valve could possibly have made occurred just a few short weeks ago. We are getting a quasi-official update to Left 4 Dead 2. Yes, you've heard that right. After eight years, Valve has officially pushed an update as of September 24th to Left 4 Dead 2. What's this addressing? Almost a thousand bugs and new content that came driven from the community. You can check that out in the description below. So what is this new content? Well, the major piece to it is The Last Stand. The initial intention was to bring a Left 4 Dead 1 uh, scavenger map, I believe, into Left 4 Dead 2. And as the creators of the mod started to dig into it, they reached out to Valve to get some official support. Now, they didn't really get total hands-on or developer support from Valve, but they were enabled by packages that Valve brought and Valve decided to patch or address some of the bugs, such as not being able to speak into a lobby for eight years. So why does this matter to us? Well, my original intention of this channel was coding, fun projects, things like that. And one of the things I wanted to do was to spin up some of my own servers dedicated to Left 4 Dead 2 in honor of The Last Stand to make sure that there was plenty of capacity out there for others to play on, as well as me and my friends. So I'm actually going to have two versions of this code. One is going to be just straight vanilla shell script. You can run it on Red Hat or CentOS, depending on the flavor you want. With some slight modifications, you can use it on any OS. The other will be that shell script, but I'm going to inject variables from a multi-cloud management tool that I use, which is Morpheus. I am going to put an asterisk with this. I do work for Morpheus. This is not intended to be a sales pitch. I just wanted to be clear on why I have two versions of the code. One being that classic shell, the other being with the Morpheus variables because it makes my life easier. I run the community edition in my home, which is free to use. So see, no sales pitch, free to use. Uh, it might be worth checking out. I have it in the description below, but it helps me manage my private cloud stuff, my VMware, my Hyper-V, but also my public cloud, Amazon, Azure, Google. And so when I write these scripts, I'm now writing it for everywhere if I wanna use it and I can track those costs. So end rant, all right, let's get on with the code. So the code here is literally up to date with the latest launch. I'm pulling the most recent version of Steam, so I'm installing that. I'm telling it to grab Left 4 Dead, and then I'm even grabbing compatible versions of MetaMod and SourceMod that work with the latest launch of Left 4 Dead 2. If you are looking for any other classic uh, Steam server type, you can utilize most of these steps and also deploy those servers. So Counter-Strike, Source, Counter-Strike, uh, things that before there were really uh, some of these cloud offerings. You could spin up your own dedicated server, whether that was on your Windows box, there is a Windows offering instead of this tar here, or uh, a CentOS box or something like that that I'm doing. So I mentioned MetaMod and SourceMod. Those are going to give me my admin abilities, voting, things like that. Some niceties that are outside of the standard stock dedicated server uh, that help me maintain it, keep the hackers out. So the first thing on the script really is adding the user Left 4 Dead 2 or LFD 2. Uh, you can make that whatever you want. But then I'm echoing a password and I'm setting that as that user's password. So from the Morpheus side, I'm doing a cipher read and I'm reading that object out of cipher that's encrypted, gets passed into this. Uh, if you're not using something like that, you will have to hard code in between the quotes, just put whatever password you would want there. I added another header in here because I wanted to clean that up. The next part in here is installing Left 4 Dead 2, so uh, MetaMod and SourceMod. Now each of those is grabbing a tar with that wget, so I'm just saying, hey, download the file, so I'm grabbing it live. I'm doing a tar XF and unzipping it, and then I'm removing whatever remnant of that tar originally was there. And on the first piece here, I'm running some Steam commands, and these are documented online if you need these for additional flags. But I'm saying, okay, I'm logging in as anonymous, so I'm logging into Steam as anonymous because you have to authenticate in to grab the files. And then I'm saying, install Left 4 Dead in this file path. And uh, this 222.860 is the code for Left 4 Dead dedicated server. There are listings, I have this in the description, on which type of game you want to install. You need to give the correct code. So this runs in a single line here, and then I say quit at the end, so it basically runs on line, does the steps and quits. I do the same for MetaMod, I do the same for SourceMod. And then I want to go through and make sure in at least the 
you know, Linux realm that I have the proper ownership of my files so things can execute. So I'm owning everything as the Left 4 Dead 2 user in the folder LF or L4D2. And the very last step, uh, this can be uh, extrapolated out of the code if you want uh, as its own startup script. But now I'm calling the source dedicated server run. So SRCDS underscore run. I'm saying, okay, the, I'm giving it the flag console game is going to be a Left 4 Dead 2 because I could have more than one game installed on this. I'm telling it the port I want to install. And in this case again, or, or sorry, the port I want it to run on. And in this case again, I'm using a Morpheus variable. So I'm asking the user in Morpheus, what's the port you want to use? And it pushes it to my code. Uh, if you have a specific that you want to utilize, you can replace this with it. Uh, like defaults are like typically in the uh, 27,000 range, so like 27,015. You just want to make sure it's not conflicting with your Steam client if you're running this local. And you don't want it conflicting with any other servers on your network as well. So unique ports per server. And then I'm executing uh, the server config. So this is saying, okay, I'm running Left 4 Dead. What are my settings? Well, let's go check those out. So this is my server config, which is the like blood and guts of the Left 4 Dead server that I'm spinning up. Okay, I had the executables there, but it's not really doing anything. I'm not telling it game types. I'm not setting admin passwords, any of that. So this is what the server.cfg does. This is what a lot of the older Steam games control those with. And I'm passing in again, every time you see these little greater than percent equals, those are my Morpheus variables. So replace those with something, replace these uniquely as you, as you want. So I'm giving it the name that users see when it launches. I'm setting some tags so I can search the server. Uh, I'm passing in again an encrypted variable that says, what's my Archon password? You will want to put something in between the quotes if you are just utilizing these scripts, right? So again, what is your password that you wanna log into your server if you are on it inside of uh, the Steam Council? If you wanna log in and say, kick someone, ban someone, change the map, whatever. So I have that server password you can ignore. That's, you know, and that's if you wanna password the server so no one can get in the lobby unless they have the password. And then a lot of these have the descriptions on what they do. So take a look at these. This is fairly, fairly vanilla. Um, I'm, the only difference is I'm running that source mod because there are some uh, CVARs that I want to execute that I want to limit. There's some common tweaks people do to kind of, let's say, cheat their way in the game, adjust their lerp so they're unhittable. And so these are actually forcing some minimums and maximums on my server that they can't get out of those bounds. And it really makes the game more enjoyable for everybody else. So now that I have my code, I'm going to run this on a CentOS server. So if you do not know how to deploy CentOS on like Hyper-V, which you can actually run on your Windows machine, um, or you, you, know, you wanna look at public cloud, I'll have some links on helping you do that. I'm going to utilize a vanilla CentOS template that I have on my VMware. And again, I'm going to either execute this code manually, or I'm going to uh, run this with Morpheus as an all-in-one kind of server offering. So I'm gonna do that uh, Morpheus way here just because it's going to expedite my lab, but it's similar steps and I'll explain it as we go. So I'm in my Morpheus, so I'm gonna quick walk you through how I would do this. And it's just essentially, it's under automation, I'm writing a bunch of, I'm injecting those scripts and I have a couple. One is I'm making sure that my LVM expands so my root volume has enough space. There's a minimum requirement, I think of 10 gigs free to install Left 4 Dead. So I'm adding a 50 gig drive to it and I'm expanding it so it's all being used. So that's this root volume expansion and I will pass that along. If you go to utilize this as an automatic script for whatever reason, you might have to make some adjustments. Mine, because of my template, I know I'm making SDA three. So you can add some logic in there um, or you can utilize this and just, if yours is SDA two, SDA four, you can make some slight tweaks and it'll work. So I'm also taking the Left 4 Dead two script I had and I'm pasting it in here as a shell script. Um, so I've just pasted it in, variables and all, 
and you can see it's the same thing I was showing prior. I'm telling it to execute on the resource, so this is going to run on the VM I'm about to deploy, that CentOS template I have in VMware, and it will run these pieces. And then the last piece, I have the start left for dead. So I broke that out from the initial so I could define this as a service and say, this is start, this is stop, uh, also running on my resource. So when I put this all together in a workflow, I put it in a provisioning workflow. And this allows me to execute things um, in certain lifecycle stages of the server. So my server is going to deploy and clone and get an IP and change its name. And then I'm going to run my first script here, which is uh, the, the provisioning phase install. And then I have a defined script here for starting the service, run the server. So now I'm going to actually order my server. So this would be similar to you deploying your CentOS or on Hyper-V, AWS, anything again, getting your CentOS server. I just have 50 gigs allocated to this. Um, I'm going to order it from this way because I've hard coded some of these settings for my users so they can deploy however many Left 4 Dead servers they want and it's always correct. So I'm gonna say this is, uh, I'm part of my, my personal cloud, so I'm gonna select my vCenter since it's the only one I've defined this workflow on in this template. Um, I can easily choose which port I want to run this on. So let's do this on 2717. I'm gonna add it to my cart, go to my cart, and let's check out and get this server in place. So now I have server 10, uh, 1036 spinning up, so I have a naming scheme. I didn't have to worry about any of that. Uh, simple things here. Got my server, it's spinning up. We can see from the history where it's at. I'm deploying the server right now. In a moment, this is going to be completed. We can see the script execution, and then we can log in and go test our server. So here I'm Morpheus deploying my template. So my CentOS template, you can see any of the uh, customizations I have afterwards. So that Left 4 Dead 2 script that I've provided in my repo, that's running right now and installing. When that completes, I can click the I and what that does is it gives me the standard out of that script. So I can see a lot of gibberish here. It's all those packages downloading and extracting. But afterwards, you can see all of the things the script did, create the user, um, any of the dependencies that I needed installed or configured. Then when I go to the settings, I'm also actually pushing the files with file templates in Morpheus. So these are files that I place, I tell it where it goes, I can manage these through the UI and push updates, but I'm using my Morpheus variables in here to dynamically update these files based off of like the port group I've selected, archon password, etc. So I can see those in the template or I can actually see what they're resolving to in preview, which is nice. So I've included the files again for Morpheus or non-Morpheus, depending on how you are deploying this, but um, it's a cool feature and it's super helpful when I'm doing things like this because I have dynamic files at all times. So now I'm just bringing up my command prompt in Windows. I'm going to SSH to the box that I've deployed. I'm just typing in the IP address and user at the moment, going to authenticate. And then I'm going to switch to the Left 4 Dead 2 user that we created with the scripts. And then navigate to the install directory. If I can type that right. And now if I just list, we can see that the server install actually occurred. Here's all the configuration files. If I cat the server CFG file and just look at the contents of it, you can see that um, not only did I push configurations that were specific to mine, but my Morpheus variables resolved. So in my name, I have that number and it was resolving the container ID. So 4829, I always have a dynamic ID, as well as an Archon password that read from Cypher that's now injected in here. So obviously I will be changing that. This is just for demo purposes, but um, all of my configuration is now here. If I wanted to go in Morpheus and edit the settings, I could push it easily. If you are not using Morpheus, you're just going to SSH into your box and modify these files as needed and restart the server. So now we are actually going to start the server manually since I'm SSH'd in here. I could configure a task to do that for me. 
Uh, it's simply calling the source dedicated server run. There's some additional flags. I have documentation for that that I've included in the description below on some of the additional flags. The key here is that port. Uh, in my script, I had a Morpheus var that I asked the user for the port and this would inject it here and start the service. Since I'm typing it manually, obviously I have to define the port. There's no quotes needed. I'm simply calling the game left for dead, executing, uh, executing my server config and defining the port. Ignore any of the errors you see in here. Some of these are just uh, because Valve has not treated their games well over time, so there's missing files. This is the latest of everything. This is running just as it should, and I will show that here in a moment. Okay, so I've overlaid the game on top of my SSH session in the background so you can kind of see what's happening. I'm opening up console. I'm connecting to my IP address. If you have an FQDN, you can do that, but I'm defining the port. So I have the command here. This is how you can connect to your server manually if you want. You can also define, uh, I believe it's like MM dedicated. I'll have that in the description. If you want to host a lobby and ensure that you go to your server. But here we can see I'm connecting. Uh, the game is loading. You can see in the left hand side there, the console detected a user. It's initiating uh, some wanderers. And here I am just in uh, simply a single person only either campaign or versus depending on what the default launch was but let's show this in action with some actual users and see how this performs and now to just load up the last stand campaign with my wife i was pleased with the performance i was using two cpu and four gig of ram i probably could have gotten away with one cpu one gig of ram or less if i'm going to containerize this i'd probably look to reduce that footprint but overall it ran well it deploys in five to ten minutes depending on my download speeds of those packages um, but it's going to be great fun with my friends and help the community out and get some servers out there be sure to click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and i will catch you next time